everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 151st Qt tutorial with C++ and GUI programming. We're going to dive right in here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new project. And we're going to make a console application. And we're going to say slash code or wherever you keep your stuff. Um, this is actually a little important, this video on where you put your things, because we're going to be linking to a library. And we're going to call this Open SSL Demo. And what do I mean by it's important where you put it? Um, you're going to have to link to the open SSL library. So let me, I've got mine, where is it? Right here, open SSL demo. But I also have this folder called libraries. And inside of there, I have my open SSL lib that's been compiled. Um, once again, I'm not going to go over how to compile this. You need to follow their directions. I won't cover how to compile it because their directions may change. And I don't want someone to you know, follow the wrong directions and then say, hey, your video sucks when somebody else changed whatever. So, all right, first things first, what we need to do is we're going to generate some RSA keys. And we do that by, let's just open in terminal. We're going to work with the OpenSSL command line. So if you've never worked with the OpenSSL command line, it's actually very simple. You type in OpenSSL, then you can just hit tab to auto do that. So gen rsa out, and we're going to say private.pem. We're going to generate our private key with a strength of 2048 bits. Um, what this does is, well, you guessed it, it generates your private key. Now remember, your private key is, well, private, meaning never give that out to anybody. It's top secret. You keep it just to yourself. Now what we need to do is take that private key and extract a public key out of it. Oops, PEM. And we're gonna say pub out, and we're gonna redirect that to public.pem. Now, I, I forget the actual name of it, but there's a mathematical principle about uh, public and private keys, meaning they're mathematically similar. So what this does is it takes your private key and from that it actually extracts if you will the public key and let's look at these real quick here so you can see the difference i'm gonna pull my notepad over here this is a private key this is what it looks like and you can go ahead and screenshot this all you want because i'm going to delete these keys and this is not what i use for my encryption this is strictly for this tutorial um i just i know there's people out there going oh my god i got his private key well no whatever so you can see it's fairly lengthy now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the public key. We're going to say, oh, I did not want LibreOffice. Thank you, LibreOffice. Open with gedit. There we go. There's the public key. There's the private key. You can see how the public key is quite a bit smaller than the private key. So the reason for that is the private key is, well, stronger. It's much stronger whereas the public key has a lot less into it. It's more of a, um, I don't want to call it a hash, but it's a simplified version of the private key. Uh, they're mathematically similar, but they're totally different. All right. Let me pull that out of there. Gosh, got my notes all screwed up here. There we go. Can't believe I opened Office on an accident here. So why are we generating the public and private keys? Well, we're going to embed those in the application. Um, in a production one, you would not do that. But for our little example, we're going to. So first thing first, we need to crack open this profile here. And I'm using a static build. Um, I'm going to use this just because I'm playing around with static. And I'm going to probably do like a static tutorial in the future. But for your purposes, you don't have to do static if you don't want to. Um, I should note that if you do a static build, you are going to need to compile OpenSSL in static mode. Uh, that's not actually accurate, but um, when you compile it and you're compiling with static, you're going to need to do two things. You're going to need to include the header files, which is what we're doing here, include path. And then we're going to need to include the libs. And I'm just for the sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste here, and I'll explain it. So we've probably done this before in other tutorials, if you followed along. Include path will tell us where the header files are. See, libraries, OpenSSL, include. And if we go out to here, libraries, OpenSSL, and then include, and then it'll search through this path, and voila, there's all our headers. 
Now you see this crypto A and SSLA, those are the two compiled binaries, not the actual libraries though. This is what we can link to. Um, notice how you don't really, see, I don't think you see the SO files in here because I didn't do that. Um, so when we compile static, these are going to go directly into the program. There'll be no need to uh, ship these with anything else. And I know people are going to scream, make a static tutorial. I'm going to. Just bear with me, guys. i got to play around with it for a bit. So I'm going to give this a good build. Make sure it picks all those things up. There's no errors. And next thing I'm going to do is we are going to make a class. Maybe if my mouse quits acting crazy. I swear this tutorial's cursed. This is like the third time I've tried to make this tutorial. It was like there was a really loud ambulance that went by and then my girlfriend decided to mow the lawn and man, it's just nuts. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to include some things and I'm going to say from this point forward, really it's just me typing out um, functions. Not going to do a lot of hard code coding, so if you want, you can just stop the video. But if you want some explanation, I'm going to keep talking as I'm typing. Um, but the bulk of the program is going to be in the next few videos. So, in short, if you are already an expert in cryptography and OpenSSL and you came just strictly to critique my typing, then feel free to skip this video. So, we're going to start including the OpenSSL stuff. Now, the first one we're going to include is RSA because, well, we're going to work with RSA. Whoopsie. We're going to include engine, which I don't really know what all of these do. I think engine is like the core engine of the cryptographic library. Uh, PEM is for keys. I think it's for keys. Um, conf, I think, is for the configuration of OpenSSL. And then uh, EVP. EVP takes a little bit of explanation. Um, RSA has kind of gotten a bad rap for being very complex and hard to use. Well, they have these functions called envelopes, and that's what you need to use is the envelopes. That way you're not writing all this hardcore code. I mean, if you're a masochist, by all means, go ahead. AES is self-explanatory, by the way. Um, but you use the envelope. That way it's much easier. And RAN, because it has a random engine built in. Now, I'm going to just save a little bit of typing here, and through the magic of copy and paste for my notes, voila, we're going to add some, some notes in here. Um, if you've never seen this before, I should probably explain. These are obviously normal comments. Um, OpenSSL, or I should say RSA, has a concept of padding. Um, it needs to be padded a specific way. Um, either you're going to use OAEP padding, or normal padding, or no padding, which is dangerous because you have to pad it yourself, or you use PKCS1 padding, which if all that sounds great to you, don't worry. I don't know what they all mean either. I'm sure somebody out there is an expert and they'll put it in the comments. But I've left those in there so if you want to play around with it, you can just simply uncomment and use a different padding. I would recommend staying with the default that I have in here. Um, I've got some defines like the key size because we're going to be working with 256-bit encryption. It's going to be 32, initialization vector 32, block size because it's a cipher block chaining. Um, 256 and then the salt size is always 8. So if you remember from our previous video, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of theory. You have to have a key, an initialization vector, and a salt in order to work with AES. Also it has a block size because it's cipher block chaining mode is what we're going to be using. And this, if you don't know what this is, um, this is Doxygen format. Doxygen is an automated uh, well, documentation engine. It can document your code, but you have to use special markup. So you'll see a lot of that in this tutorial. Um, so basically, this wraps the RSA and AES crypto functions in OpenSSL. It's compatible with the command line. It's the exact same thing as doing these commands. So we do OpenSSL, AES256, cipher block chaining with the salt. The message digest is SHA1. We have an in file, an out file, and then a password. Um, I should note that it's not really a password. We're, gonna de we're going to derive a cryptographic key from the password. It's much stronger than using an actual bits from a password itself. And just some notes, hey, if you're going to use this thing, because I'm going to post this out on my website, be sure to link to the libraries and have the include path. Whew. Now that that's done, we're going to give this a good rebuild just to make sure that we are getting to everything that we need here. Compile output. I love solid state drives so fast. All right. So we're good there. 
Now, the rest of this tutorial is just me kind of talking and typing, as boring as it is. I know you guys don't like to watch me copy and paste, so RSA. Let's see, we're going to make a couple functions. We're going to say get public key. Oopsie. Qbyte array. Now you notice how we're returning a pointer, whoops, a pointer to an RSA. What is that? Well, that is a class, actually I think it's a structure inside of the OpenSSL library. Um, we do this because what we're gonna do is load the public key from either a Q file or a Qbyte array. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the private key. Get Provit key? I don't think so. I started playing a new video game called Overwatch from Blizzard and my key bindings are all kind of messed up and my my muscle memory is all messed up because I am not paying attention to what I'm doing apparently. Um, so yeah, I mean, some of you gamers out there know what I'm talking about. Whenever you switch video games, you kind of get all messed up. So we're just going to write in some notes here. Load from a byte away, it's going to return data. Or, I'm sorry, the param is the byte array. I, uh, in my professional life, I actually do comment my code quite a bit. I know in these tutorials I really don't, um, simply because it's time consuming. But for this specific little mini series, I'm going to, uh, because encryption is very complex and you need to know what's going on under the hood here. So I'm curious while I'm just typing away at this if anybody else is playing Overwatch because I think it's actually kind of nice. I shouldn't call that data. I should call that, well, yeah, data. Why not? That shouldn't be named data. Do, do, do. And we can't do the copy constructor on that. All right, so just bear with me here. Um, definitely feel free to fast forward to this little part here. Probably would have been easier if I just would have copied and pasted that to begin with. Someone will ask me, um, there's this thing out there called Twitch. Um, um, if you don't know what it is, it allows you to live stream like video games. Well, some programmers are actually, uh, they're live streaming themselves coding. And someone said, Brian, could you do that? It'd be so awesome. And I was like, no, <laughs> I would be horrible at that. Um, simply because um, a lot of times I actually like kind of curse and sometimes I'll have like the perfect video and I'll like say a very bad word like shazi boo boo or something like that and then I have to start all over because I hate video editing. All right, so we have got our load public, load private. If you're wondering why I have a byte array and a file, it's because, well, from the file version, we'll actually open the file, load the byte array, and then pump it into this guy right here, and then just return that RSA pointer. Uh, we're going to do that for both public and private. Then, well, let's see here. We need to encrypt RSA and decrypt RSA. Now, this is a little different, so we're going to say qbyte array. And we need an RSA key, you guessed it. All 
All right. You know what? I'm just going to speed this up a little bit and copy that right out of my notes here. I like making sound effects now just to make things more exciting. Someone said my videos are very dry and boring and I need to do sound effects. So anyways, so what Encrypt RSA is going to do is we're going to give it an RSA key that we loaded from, you know, you guessed it, public key. And we're going to hand it that pointer. And then we're going to give it some bytes and it's going to encrypt those bytes and return the encrypted byte array. So, and then we're going to say key byte array decrypt RSA. Whoops. And obviously what decrypt does is you will take your private key and you will then, you know, decrypt that data out. What did I goof up here? Oh yeah. The magic of copy and paste, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Why is that freaking out on me? Unexpected token. Hmm. Probably help if I told it what it was, right? There we go. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say we've got encrypt RSA and we've got decrypt RSA. Now remember, we're only using RSA to protect, pro protect, protect the AES key because that AES key has to remain private at all times. So of course we need, you guessed it, not byte order. What are you thinking here, keyboard? Jeez, Q byte array. Well, if you guessed byte order, you were absolutely wrong. Um, we're going to say encrypt AES. And we're going to do the AES encryption. So we're going to say Q byte array passphrase. And Q byte array the data. And let me grab my notes here. Trying to save a little bit of boredom for you guys by just copy and pasting the comments here. Mm, that's not actually right. Hmm, yeah. What did I do there? Salt data, there we go. Oh, goodness, kitty, go away. We're just going to copy and paste this guy. So whenever we have an encrypt, we obviously need a decrypt. Whoops, maybe. We'll see what else is new. Um, loaded up Diablo 3 again. Fun game. I don't know why I ever quit playing that. Decrypt. Uh, all right, so decrypt. This is kind of the boring part of documentation. Is you got to make sure everything lines up. So we got our encrypt. We got our decrypt. Now we also want a random bytes. Gosh, why does it keep doing that? I'm telling you, this tutorial's cursed. Why is it? There, do it, do it. What I do, what I said. All right, there we go. So, what this will do is it'll call the OpenSSL function, where we're going to actually, you guessed it, we're going to generate random bytes. And we're going to call the uh, OpenSSL function to do that. We're not going to do anything internal with Qt or C++ directly. Free RSA key. So what free RSA key is going to do is, well, you guessed it. It's going to take an RSA key and it's going to free it from memory. We could get fancy and use like a Qscope pointer or something like that. But honestly, I just want to keep it nice and simple. Um, I, I mean, our main focus here isn't really memory. It's more, uh, you know, how do you work with OpenSSL here? So we're going to also make add just a bunch of spaces so I can scroll down and you can see what's going on here. We're going to say void in niche You're going to have to initialize the OpenSSL library. And of course, if we're going to initialize, we also need to finalize. Um, that's basically 
when you work with libraries, a lot of times um, they'll have you do what's called an initializer. So you actually initialize the library and then you'll need to do what's a finalizer. So you'll have to clean up or, you know, remove things from memory, that sort of stuff. Um, and then I'm just going to have some helper functions in here. I don't know why I just did that. That was stupid. I'm just wasting your time at this point. All right, there we go. So, cubite array, read file, whoops, and this is just going to very simply just read the file and then return a cubite array. And then uh, we're going to say void, write file. We are having uh, what I call the battle of the air conditioner here in the household. Um, she doesn't like the air conditioner, and I love the air conditioner. So one minute it's freezing cold, the next minute it's like boiling hot. Cubite array. All right, so I'm going to go over a few little things real quick. This is the basic structure of the program that we're going to be working with here. Um, so we got our public keys where we can load them, our private keys where we can load them. We use the public and private keys to encrypt and decrypt with RSA. Um, AES, we're going to give it a passphrase. Notice that's a passphrase, not a password. Um, the reason is just terminology. Then we are going to encrypt and decrypt with AES. And we also have random bytes because we're going to randomly, you know, generate things for like the salt, things of that nature, and the RSA key, or I'm sorry, the AES key. We're going to have to initialize the OpenSSL lib, and we're going to have to clean up after it. And we're just going to read file and write file. Um, and then in the main, which we haven't gotten to yet, I'm going to actually add the public and private keys, but I'm not really going to waste your guys' time with that. So I'm going to actually flesh out a lot of these functions. And when I say flesh out, I'm literally just going to go right click and then add definition in. And I'm going to do that for each one just to get these built up. But I'm going to stop the video here so you don't just watch me click for two minutes. Um, the next video, we're going to actually start working with the internal code and, you know, loading the keys and working with RSA. And if we have time going into AES and then probably the video after that, we're going to pull everything together and actually write some test functions and test it versus the command line. All right. So uh, where am I at here? That's it for this. I'm going to try and keep that kind of, you know, short. Um, next video, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, be sure to visit my website for source code for this and other tutorials. Also, go to the Voidrooms Facebook group out on Facebook. Uh, there's over 600 some odd programmers out there, all different sorts of languages. So um, instead of emailing me your questions, like if you say, oh, my God, Brian, show, how do I do a static build? Just ask in the Facebook group that everybody will start pitching in.